Many old maps show an ancient landmass at the North Pole called Hyperborea. One of them of the maps is dated 1595. Uh, today we're told there's nothing up there but water, ice and snow. So in the span of years between 1595 and now, was there an event sometime in the 17th century that would cause a mini ice age and a disappearance of Hyperborea? And is it the location of the Garden of Eden? Well, first of all, uh, Hyperborea is not the location of the Garden of Eden. The, the location of the Garden of Eden was in the um, Fertile Crescent area. But uh, Hyperborea is one of several uh, uh, Shambhala-like cities, uh, uh, Eureka-like cities, that uh, exist uh, in the fifth dimensional space around the Earth. And uh, uh, these cities periodically are able to anchor themselves into different areas of the planet. And uh, sometimes they are anchored uh in, in the north in this uh, uh uh example in the north pole sometimes they're anchored uh in this this hyperborea uh it was also uh, in uh the atlantis area the 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 um uh, lost continent is also near different parts of greece so th there were different areas where this uh, uh, uh shambhala type energy field representing the city of light was downloaded. Now, uh, when you were talking about this mini ice age, there was a mini ice age uh, around that time. Now, uh, in, in part, it was related to a, a volcanic eruption in Indonesia, which uh, uh, created so much ash that parts of the planet uh, sunlight was blocked off, and uh, it did produce uh, some uh, strange things. But also, there was a uh, low solar cycle at that time, which in addition contributed to this. So what she is referring to is uh, uh, accurate that uh, the, 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 this area did become even less inhabitable at that time. Did the people living there venture out into the world with intention to enlighten the humanity? Did they build buildings on other continents that still exist and are used by us present-day humans? And why do I feel such a strong connection to it? This continent um, could be considered a lost continent, like the Lemurian continent, like the um, Atlantean continent. The thing that I can offer is that this lost continent and the people on that are not involved in this earth drama at this time. For their own reasons, for their own personal development, they withdrew from the earth dance or the, the earth drama. There are not significant architectural structures left. They did not want to have any trace of themselves and they are content to be withdrawn and in their places away from humanity. They are safe and protected in their inner realms there. I think that in other lifetimes, you probably visited them. It is similar to the energy of Shangri-La. Remember in the, the book, The Lost Horizon, the visitors from the external world visited Shangri-La and became attracted and wanted to give up their third dimensional world to live in this utopia. And that is the way for your experiences. It was 
definitely a utopian or Shangri-La experience and would be an experience to live with them. But as it was portrayed in The Lost Horizon, the book The Lost Horizon, you could not live in both worlds. You could not live in the third dimensional world and go in Shangri-La and then leave or come back. It's just too much. And in fact, in the world of Shangri-La, you don't want to leave. Your needs are met. There's no disease. Uh, there's no uh, greed. There's no need for money. I mean, I can go on and on on the different things and, and how that would explain what you experience in that continent in that lifetime. And so, yes, I'm sure there is a deep-rooted desire to return to what is very similar to the experience of Shangri-La.